What's up mga kap and welcome again to When in Halifax. On this video, I'm going to share to you the three most important things to do when you are looking for a job or employer dito sa Canada. So if you're ready, let's begin. So the first thing that I want you to remember is email. Email mga kap because email is one of your way to connect and communicate to your employer. So I have several things that you need to remember in terms of email. The first one is make sure that your email is professional, it's decent name, and at the same time, easy to remember. So if you have an email that like this one, um, sexy, da, uh, se sexy Jasmine, or maybe um, handsome next door or maybe john uh, 69 at gmail let's go if you have this kind of email please change it i'm going to ask you to put yourself as an employer and you see this email what do you think let's reverse the situation that you are now the employer you're not the applicant you are the employer and you're reading all the cover letters and resume and this person is actually suitable for your position so suitable for for the position so this guy sabi mo ah eto na to eto na yung aking kukunin kasi swak sa hinahanap ko when you do the communication through the email it says maki kiss me at gmail.com so i'm going to question what do you think what will be your impression so make sure guys that you are if you're creating an email Make sure that this is decent. At the same time, make sure it's professional email that you have and easy to remember. So my suggestion for you when you are creating an email, make sure that it is from your name. Because it's easy to remember for a person that they don't know you. So for example, I am John de la cruz or maybe uh for example i am juan de la cruz so my name is juan de la cruz so my email will be juan.delacruz at gmail.com it's easy to remember it's professional because it's based from my name i try to find an email na, na nagagamit mo ang iyong pangalan so avoid to use numbers because sometimes mga kap if you are the employer most of the people they will think about your name so, for example, you say juan.delacruz2020 at gmail.com. So, I am the employer. Let's say, for example, I am the employer and I really, really like your applications. And then when I type an email to invite you to apply, the only email that I put is your name, juan.delacruz without the 2020 at gmail.com. So, what do you think what will happen? you cannot receive an email from the employer. So maybe the reason why you're not receiving an email is it's it's hard to remember your email. Maybe you, you revert your email. Like, for example, my name is Joey. Instead of J-O-E-Y, I put Y-E-O-J in, <laughs> instead of Joey. So you make things complicated. So always remember, it's easy to remember. Uh, so ngayon mga kap, what do you think with this? So, kumusta naman ang inyong mga email? Please share your thoughts on the comment section. So, the second, the second tip that I want you to remember is make sure that you are familiar with, with software. Inter, uh, software like the Viber, WhatsApp, Zoom, Skype. Because these platforms or software are commonly used for online interview. So for example, you got an employer, na hire ka ng employer at sabi niya, okay, let's do an initial interview online. I'm going to send you a link through Zoom. And then ikaw naman ay naghihintay na i-invite somewhere. So, nasend na ng link and then instead of i-click yung link, you don't know how to click the link. So you miss the opportunity uh, to be hired by the employer. So as of now, mga kap, if you're watching right now, what I want you to do is try to explore Zoom meeting. Try to explore and use the Skype 
Viver, or other tool. Para po, just in case the employer say, okay, I'm going to interview to the WhatsApp. Okay, that's fine. I know how to use WhatsApp. And sabi ng employer, I will interview to the Zoom meeting. That's fine. I know how to use the Zoom meeting. So what I want you to do now is, after this video, after you watch this video, what I want you to do is try to explore the Zoom meeting, Skype, Viber, and WhatsApp. And if you're using other platform, please comment it below because sharing is caring. The third advice that I want you to remember when you are applying for uh, for designated employer, maybe employer from the caregiver, or maybe just you are looking for a job in, the, in Canada, what I want you to remember is the time difference. So there is a time difference uh, when uh, time difference of Canada and the Philippines. So 12 hours po kami. So ngayon, if you're watching right now, it's already um, it's 3 p.m. in the in, in Canada. It's already 3 p.m. here. So in the Philippines, it will be 2 in the morning. So always be mindful with the time difference po mga kap. It's very important that you are aware of the time difference. So if you are sending a resume, so the, uh, the resume, most probably the employer will message you during the office hours. And anong office hours? Office hours ng Canada or offer office hours ng Pilipinas? So since you are applying in Canada, you will follow the office hours in Canada. So the office hours here is 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. So in the Philippines, it will be a 7 p.m. 7 p.m. to 5 in the morning. So 7 p.m. in the evening in the Philippines to 5 in the morning. So if you're waiting for a call from the employer because you keep on sending an email and application through online, so you need to expect that there will be an email between 7 p.m. in the evening in the Philippines and 5 a.m. Why? Because of the time difference. So another technique that I want you to remember, you can put it also on your cover letter, the preferred time to call because of the time difference. So it depends on the strategy. But again, mga kap, it's very important that you are mindful with the time difference. So maybe you open your email, you are cautious that there's someone or you're always anticipating that there is a call from 7 p.m. Philippine time to 5 in the morning. So just in case that you are ready to pick up the call, always ready your mobile phone or your email. So that's it mga kap. That's my tip for today and I hope you're able to find it helpful. If you do, please subscribe to our channel. Follow me on my social media platform when in Halifax on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to join our growing Cup Unity, the Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. And of course, join our regular program, the Q&A with Miss Amelia Ajok, a licensed immigration consultant, dito po sa Canada. So see you here always on our when in Halifax. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Signing out. Bye mga kaps!